Okay, uh, we have two papers left. Uh, the both papers are on cash. Uh, uh, okay, both papers are on cash, and uh, the second one is on um, it, it, it's on the uh, the YouTube cash. They invented a, a very normal way to manipulate to manipulate user behavior to to improve YouTube cash mechanism. And the speaker is Didip Krishnapa. Uh, he is currently a PhD student at uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst. Thank you for the introduction. So. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, probably if I do. <laughs> okay, I think this is the right paper so for me. So yeah, that, uh, my topic is uh, cache-centric video recommendation and approach to improve the efficiency of uh, YouTube caches. Uh, if any of you attended NOSDAV, uh, I touched uh, upon this approach. Uh, I will give you. Uh, brief and uh, overview of uh, the approach that I talked to reorder. So the outline will be there. I'll give a motivation for uh, tweaking the reordering list, reorder list offered by, uh, sorry, uh, related list offered by YouTube uh, to improve the caching. Uh, then I'll give, say, I'll talk to you uh, feasibility of uh, reordering uh, related list, uh, and then the approach, the results, and a few discussion topics. So the motivation is uh, pretty simple because uh, YouTube is uh, being one of the most popular YouTube uh, user generated video service in, on the internet uh, and requ uh, receives a lot of requests each day and uh, as per statistics uh, billions of hours of videos are watched every month by 800 uh, odd million unique users on YouTube which uh, you know builds or uh, makes up a lot of the traffic on the internet so effective caching is required to reduce the amount of traffic on the internet taken up by videos and uh, any tweaks or uh, anything which reduces it is a good uh, measure or good thing to for effectiveness and effective caching is pretty, pretty actually difficult in youtube because of its long tail and because youtube follows a zip like zip distribution where only few videos are high popular uh, and can be found in many ca all the caches and uh, many of them uh, probably get less than 100,000 or less than 1,000 views sometimes. So it's pretty. It's actually difficult, uh, different than uh, any other uh, inter internet video services like uh, Netflix or Hulu because they are professionally produced content and they know when they're going to produce new content uh, on their website. So they can, uh, the effective caching in that uh, inter in video services are pretty easy. And uh, there have been uh, uh, ways of uh, improving the effectiveness by caching and prefetching of related videos uh, earlier. Uh, so which have shown to be effective to reduce the server load and uh, improve the streaming quality by reducing the latency of the video requests. So the their idea is like uh, to cache or prefetch the related list offered uh, by YouTube. As you can see on the right hand side, it's a YouTube watch page and uh, Related video list is marked there. YouTube offers 20 related list uh, uh, on on the watch page, and there is a load more option which produces 20 more. 
and uh, from previous work uh, IMC 2010 and IMC uh, 2011 uh, from the traces taken uh, on the campus gateway network you can see that uh, people use people watch uh, 35 to 40 percent of the time 35 to 25 to 35 percent of the time uh, from the related uh, video list uh, and from our trace taken actually pretty recently I would say one year ago it, it has been boosted up to 45 percent so uh, as you can see uh, the 2011 MMC 2011 uh, used the 2010 trace so uh, from about two years there's a 10 percent increase in the people watching from rated videos so that uh, shows the user behavior in uh, they probably click from the rated list and uh, another important okay I'll get to that but the approach we use is to tweak the rate reordering uh, so rated list to reorder the rated list based on what we have in the cache. The caching and prefetching is good, but it in in increases the load on the network because prefetching uh, downloads more videos into your cache to get a higher cache hit rate, uh, which uh, you know it's it's good, but uh, it increases more load than reducing it. But what our approach is. We usually uh, caches just uh, uh, we already ha know what people are watch watched before. But based on the history, we just uh, uh, reorder the rated list uh, to make people watch the same video again, so that they don't the request doesn't go have to go to the backend network and increase the load. And to verify the feasibility of our re reordering approach, uh, we perform a chain analysis to and also to understand the rated list behavior uh, or rated list how uh, YouTube uh, generate the rated list or uh, order the rated list to you know to understand if they already do reordering or they don't and also uh, we also perform a RTT analysis for the video request to uh, understand the origin of the videos uh, to know if the rated list uh, are being uh, sh uh, the top of the top order of the rated list are being provided by the nearby cache or if they're doing any such uh, thing already doing any such things so uh, the trace de details. So our uh, work is based on trace-based simulation taken from a university campus in uh, uh, in Connecticut. Uh, so uh, we take the trace by uh, deploying a monitor uh, at the edge of the, uh, edge of the campus network by using a DAG and a DAG card, uh, so which monitors the traffic to and from the network, going through the to and, uh, to and from the campus gateway. And we have a three-day trace. Uh, taken on Feb 6, 2012, which has about 105,000 requests, and out of those, uh, 47 odd of them, 41k, uh, 48k of them are related videos, so which makes up to 46% of the related list of the videos of the requests. Uh, we also used uh, old trays from uh, 2010, which is the MMS 2011 trays, uh, which has 7,500 videos uh, taken on John Dan 8th. The less number of requests is due to the less number of people on the campus because during it was spring break, sorry, it was winter break, and the number of rated videos at that point was uh, 2,500, uh, which makes up to 35% of the requests. As you can see, there is a 10% boost in the rated videos request. And the right hand side, uh, you can see the CDF plot of the rated video uh, request based on their position. And uh, as you can see, uh, for uh, uh, up until position 10, so that makes up to the top order of the rated list, we have about 80% uh, of the requests. So that means people usually uh, select from the top of order of the rated list uh, uh, instead of uh, scrolling down till the end to find their content. Wow. So or usually they find uh, their content what uh, they want from the top order of the rated list. So our approach is to uh, change or modify the rated list based on what we have in the cache to move the content in the cache to the top order of the list so that we can increase the hit rate. And to, inc to uh, know the feasibility of our uh, uh, approach, uh, we perform a chain analysis uh, to understand the rated list behavior. We, and there are two metrics to understand that. One is the loop count and the other is chain count. Uh, loop count is, uh, as you can see from figure A here, is uh, the video chain uh, video request chain forms a loop when you start from a video go through the rated list and uh, in the rated list if you select the same video as the initial one again so in figure a you uh, select video c and video c 
related list, uh, you select video F, then K, but then from video K's related list, you select video C again, so we form a loop, which uh, usually people tend to avoid. So, but the loop count uh, here is uh, two. And, uh, and the figure B is a chain count where uh, you select from related list uh, up until you get bored or you don't find your content and select from uh, other means, say, search. So in the figure B also, the chain count is uh, two because you click on the related list twice and before uh, s requesting another video by search. So we do this analysis to understand uh, uh, user uh, related list pattern where people, if the people, a uh, chain count can tell us if people spend more time on the related list, uh, how often, how, how big a chain they, they create, uh, and the loop count gives you if uh, people find a, loop, f find a loop on top by selecting on the top part of the related list, or if the ch loop increases as you move towards bottom of the related list. That's the analysis which you have done, and I'll uh, present the results. So from chain count, uh, we use the traces which I showed earlier. And from trace one, which is the current trace, uh, from 2012, uh, the chain count is 85% of the time uh, there's a chain count of one. That means 85% of the time, usually people select once from the rated list and 15% of the time uh, they request more than once. And the maximum chain count was eight in trace one. This, uh, uh, okay, tr from tra for trace two, the chain, uh, for 8% of the time there was a chain count of one and 51% of the time the chain count of two. Uh, there is a high percentage of uh, chain count of greater than one, uh, uh, greater than uh, at least two in trace two, and a maximum of 21. I think uh, this is because, as I told in NOSDAV, the related list uh, differ uh, nowadays from region to region, uh, and also from node to node. Uh, I presume it was not the case in 2010, and uh, we don't know the reason if why YouTube has done that. And also, the, the main another reason was the trace T2 was taken in UMass, and the related lists were formed in UMass or uh, taken from uh, UMass. But the trace T1 was collected in UConn or University of Connecticut, and the uh, related list was was taken from the University of Massachusetts. So, which ma might be uh, one of the cases why the maximum chain count is less, and also the percentage of uh, chain count of at least two uh, is less in case of trace one and more in trace two. So, that but this shows that people usually spend more time clicking on the related list uh, than often. Uh, to understand if this this happens in a global basis, uh, we did a loop count analysis uh, and we did it using Planet Lab. So. I think, again, if you attend my NOSDAV, you would have probably known that uh, I like Planet Lab. So <laughs> I, again, use the global no uh, Planet Lab nodes and divided into uh, regions, four regions, and uh, US, Europe, Asia, and South America, and did the Planet Lab analysis to calculate the loop count, uh, two loop counts. One, if what happens if uh, of the loop count uh, changes if uh, if you click on uh, clicking the same rated video position, and uh, how the loop count changes if you click randomly. So this plot shows for the uh, fixed related video positions where we request 100 videos. Uh, we request 100 videos from each node and uh, click on the related videos for fixed positions, say one on each of uh, for each of the videos uh, until we, you form a loop where after clicking say two or twice or thrice, you f you select the same initial video, uh, then your loop count is two. So. This plot shows the chain loop count for each of the positions, for an average chain loop count for each of the positions. As you can see, uh, the average uh, across the rate video position is constant around three to four. This is a pretty interesting result because uh, having a huge library of uh, videos, uh, you assume uh, uh, YouTube uh, related, related list to be created uh, from uh, closely, uh, from the top order to be uh, to be created by a closely related videos and the bottom half to be created by the large library or long tail which YouTube has. But as you can, but this result shows that uh, YouTube usually uses a small single pool of videos to form their uh, form the related list and uh, no particular uh, video position uh, video preference is attached to positions. So to see if this is the same uh, case for random selection of uh, rated list uh, when we do the lo loop count analysis uh, we selected uh, we click uh, we select a video and uh, keep on repeating the random selection uh, for 50 times to uh, and then analyze the loop count uh, and analyze if we found the loops 
So this plot shows the loop count uh, for uh, random selection, where uh, y-axis shows the percentage of number of times uh, you get uh, the, the loop, those uh, loop counts. For some time, the videos end up with loops. So as you can see, uh, major po major portions of uh, the loop count is un up until five. After that, it's pretty small, and the maximum was uh, 19. But the main point here is again, uh, as uh, this it concurs with our, our fixed position results, where uh, your uh, where the related videos are formed from a single pool of uh, videos, which may or may not be closely related, but. Uh, uh, Closely related, and um, but this is this might be good for caching because uh, you know because you have a sp single small pool of related videos. Uh, th when a video enters your cache, it, 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 it's uh, uh, it's there to stay and it doesn't uh, change or doesn't move out so often. So you have a high chance of hitting the same video again. So and also and also this result sh under uh, shows that. Uh, uh, YouTube doesn't uh, do any reordering or uh, any preference or any uh, give any preference to the related list uh, order in which they make it appear on their watch page. So our approach it doesn't affect our approach of reordering presented in this paper. And also to understand if uh, YouTube uh, pro uh, sh YouTube provides the videos from a nearby cache uh, based on if, if the video is popular or from related uh, if the if it's high up on the related list order, we did a. Uh, uh, RTT analysis for by requesting 100 videos and their related videos uh, from trace one, and uh, the plot on the right uh, shows the CDF plot for the number of videos requested uh, uh, in that uh, RTT range, and uh, from from the RTTs uh, we found there we divided into three different uh, RTT ranges. One is less than three milliseconds. Uh, the second cache is three milliseconds to 12. And the third one is greater than 12 milliseconds. We can divide easily divide it to three uh, different levels of caches because we saw three different subnet ranges for each of these millisecond ranges. And uh, we can say cache one is uh, definitely from uh, dif uh, from a different cache because those represent the Yuma uh, Yuma's ca uh, Google caches. So and so with these three caches uh, and also this uh, this uh, work I mean uh, makes our Justifies the uh, work, another related work, uh, which shows, which tells us that YouTube employs uh, deploys three three tier cache hierarchy to uh, supply or to uh, provide uh, videos to their users. And the uh, figure on the left shows the CDF plot for number of video requests for these uh, based on these cache levels. As you can see. Uh, the, ca uh, the cache level one is the closest, but uh, the number of videos served from them is less. Cache level two has about 50%. Cache one has 25%. Cache three has 20%. So that shows that uh, YouTube doesn't. Uh, YouTube uses load balancing to uh, to serve the videos and not uh, any not give any preference to any popularity of videos, uh, not the related list order. So with this. Uh, Feasibility, uh, with knowing that feasibility, the YouTube doesn't employ deploy any uh, uh, reordering or uh, any give any preference for the related list order. We can uh, now present the reordering approach, uh, which I already talked. So the thing, our reordering approach, we have a cache which holds, which holds uh, uh, the videos which have been previously requested, and uh, the, the next when you get a video request, you check the related videos and from uh, from for that for that video for that video and see if, if the videos are present the videos in the related list are present in the cache if they are present in the cache then move them up the order to the beginning and then uh, push the other which are not in the cache down to the order so the thing is we don't uh, we just do a stable sort where uh, we just move the videos uh, in tr without any order uh, or priority to the top of the list and then all the others to just in, in the same order to the bottom so, and uh, there are two ways of uh, users selecting the videos from the related list uh, or the order related list. Either uh, they can use the same, uh, they can select based on their content which they previously requested, or uh, if if they are lazy, they can select from the same position which they previously requested. So. So the reordering approach is one is content-centric reordering, where uh, the related list. Uh, 
selection is based on your content and uh, position of your rear uh, your, your, your same video if you requested might change uh, because of reordering and which because if it had not been in the cache in position centric reordering the rate list selection uh, based on position of the original list original requested and the content might be uh, might be changed based on reordering because you know because of the content was in uh, was in the cache so uh, if it if it is of any interest to the user or may not or maybe more relevant to the user uh that's not that's uh, up to the users so we show uh, this is a trace based simulation so we don't know uh, we simulate the user behavior from the trace which we took from uh, uh, which we have from our campus gateway and the results are shown uh, on the plot uh, above and also in the table so if you have a content centric uh, uh, reordering selection it's it's as if you have a simple cache and uh, from trace 1 we have a 6.71 hit rate uh, cache hit rate and from Trace two is 4.71. But if you have a position centric where you move the order, uh, move the uh, videos to the up, up the order, and if the user select the same position as they selected before, the cache hit rate increases to 11.83, and uh, for trace one and 22.902 uh, uh, trace two. That's a two to five time increase in cache hit rate if uh, users uh, select the same position or select from the top of the order. Uh, due to the reordering and uh, the cdf plot uh, just shows uh, when show uh, depicts the same uh, hit rate where there is a blip or uh, increase in the uh, cdf positions till up to uh, it, it, it's it's more up until uh, position 10 after that it's, it's basically the same so this pretty much shows that uh, reordering increases the cache hit rate and reduces the uh, server load uh, so discussion points, uh, the cost of, re of this reordering approach, uh, the cost depends on how big your cache and uh, how much cache do you hold uh, and how much uh, memory it takes or how much time it takes for you to uh, know that your reordered list videos are there in the cache and to move them to the order. So, but uh, it's, it, if the, it's higher if, if more the content in the cache, but the, the cache it, it rate is uh, more substantial compared to the cost. So it's not a big... Uh, uh, issue and the reduction in server load is imp is also important as the cache in hit rate increases from uh, two to four times uh, and the, the server load also increases decreases in by the same amount uh. and uh, the two things which we don't do in this paper is uh, popularity based on sort based sorting of related list uh, so that it's we use a stable sort where we don't uh, reorder based on uh, any popularity of the re 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 of the related list and the popularity uh, makes sign significant difference only if uh, you know the video is highly popular and if the video is highly popular then probably it's it is already in the top of the list or in the cache and adaptive video streaming or uh, I wouldn't say adaptive because YouTube doesn't use adaptive video streaming. Uh, say YouTube offers different, uh, YouTube uh, is the same content with different bit rates, and each bit rate is taken as different files. Uh, here, uh, I, I assume or we assume uh, same uh, constant uh, is the default uh, bit rate of 360 kbps uh, or 480 by 480 by 320 uh, format. Uh, uh, so if, if if user has clicked this different format, uh, then it's, con it's considered a different file, which we don't consider uh, in our work. So in conclusion, uh, we take advantage of user behavior of selecting from the related list and also from the top of the related list. And our approach is to reorder the related list uh, based on uh, what we have in the cache, based on the content in the cache to the top of the list. And uh, we present two approaches, content centric, where user can select if the same content uh, if you, if by scrolling down, or you can select uh, from the position uh, from the top of the list. Uh, so, and content, content centric is like basic caching, and position centric is leads to a high cache hit rate uh, because uh, we user click this content which is already in the cache, and it also helps reduce the server load and the latency. So in future work, uh, uh, the thing is, this is a trace-based simulation, and uh, we would like to do a real-world simulation by uh, changing the related list uh, by deploying a uh, proxy in between the requests. And also, uh, as Clara mentioned in uh, NOSDAV, uh, we can use a QED technique uh, to uh, analyze the causal effect of this change. Uh, uh, it, it will produce a more realistic than a trace-based simulation. Thank you.
It is a very interesting approach. Uh, maybe we could apply it to various other fields as well, by just ordering things in, uh, in an order so that we make people make the selections we want them to make. Sure. But, um, but you haven't actually checked that it works, I think, because you haven't actually shown that you know, by moving a certain video from the first position to the fifth position, people will still click the first position video as opposed to them actually being guided by the content description and still clicking the fifth position. Yeah, that's what I, I mentioned. This is a trace-based simulation where we uh, we emulate the user to select the uh, if we, if the results show how what happens if the user selects the same position after reordering yeah. as it did before. But so I mean, it could be that users are actually driven by by content. The content. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. In which so case, it wouldn't work. In which case, it uh, it, it may not work. So that's yeah. why the our next, as I told in future work, it's 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 it'll be good to know the effect or the psychology of a user only by doing a real world simulation. I'm afraid you're right, by the way. I'm afraid people will just pick the top, con the top one, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Usually people don't scroll down till they see the 20th video and then click the 70th. Yeah. So. Any more question? Okay, okay, one more. Yeah, So, uh, in your introduction, you talked about a long tail distribution that gave you some problems. Is that right? Did did you talk more about that long tail distribution, or did I misunderstand? No, I just mentioned that YouTube has a long tail to select videos from, uh, which ma which makes the ca caching less effective, or uh, because it has a lot of videos to cache, and uh, people may request from anywhere, which which is probably easy in Netflix or Hulu because the contents are less. That's all I mentioned. Okay, so thanks again for did it. Sure.